story which uh, uh, somehow uh, reveals a uh, kind of uh, three-dimensional fields in it. And we do this similar count of uh, two-dimensional partitions uh, to correspond to a uh, So, uh, so this partition function, after you uh, resolve it, there's some controls in this as well, which depends on your key one to do n. But what do you mean non commutative? Is it just u1 5D theory on the circle times of plane? So it's the theory is on S1 plus R4. Yeah. So we also have the other information. So q1 and q2. Exponential of the radius of the circle times epsilon branches, so circle times so r. And it's not illusory in the sense that it has instant ones. Uh, it's, not, it's not the maximum theory, it's the maximum theory with some high derivatives. Uh, so it's like um, it's a single defaulting <coughs> that there's many zero values in the way. Is this like reducing to 4D and keeping all the numbers and nine modes? Or is it yeah, yeah. Uh, and what's n? And it's so this m, uh, this m is actually so it's exponential of the radius of the mass of the hyperplane. It's an addition of So this, uh, this partition function also depends on four parameters. So p, q1, q2, and m. And they are not, uh, so there is some relation in geometry between these parameters and the four parameters in a three-dimensional multi problem. I just want, so the reason why I bring this up is that I want to illustrate the need to enlarge the uh, CFT on the CFT side of the BPSFT correspondence to something higher dimension. So actually, uh, after some massaging of this formula, you can make it look Okay, so first of all, we can write it as uh, in, in the T form. Uh, 
And then, if I'm not mistaken, you get here something like uh, uh, P to the N, 1 minus
So Q1 and Q2 enter actually in the definition of the flat SO4 bundle. But this is not the end of the story because it has an ultimate there are also five scalars. So there is a, there is a spin five global symmetry and uh, Q1 and <coughs> Q2 and this parameter M, this initiated mass parameter, corresponds to a twist in the spin five part. So spin five has one two. In general, a priori you might have uh, two additional parameters which will tell you what's the spin five. Those two lines are on these two torus, but the supersymmetry forces you to make a relation between the twists of the space time and the transverse, uh, so this is a transverse space. And so you have only three parameters out of four. But then, on the other hand, what you can do, you can expand this, this part in the, in the geometric series, so you get a bunch of terms. You want to the power n minus 1, to the power n minus 1, then plus minus uh, n to some power, also q1. And this is all, uh, so all to the power n. And this is multiplied by the n, 1 minus p to the n. Now I should tell you that if you have an expression of that sort, one of the n to the n, and here something like uh, x to the n plus x to the minus n plus one, like this, exponential, then uh, the minus n. Then this, what this gives you is your theta function. If you expand it, then you call it. So it's theta 1 1, x. You have to add something which would correspond to n equals to 0 part to account for some anomalous prefactors in the theta function. But actually, when we take into account all these skills, these are always the factors on the cancel. So, uh, this partition function is actually the ratio of an infinite number of theta functions. Uh, the arguments of these theta functions are some largest points on the torus. So each theta function, the numerator and denominator, corresponds to a free boson or free, free fermion. And if you are unlucky, uh, I mean, if, if for some reason you didn't have this full partition function at your disposal, but only in specification in the case, let's say, when q1, q2, q1, q2, q1, q2, q1, 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 then you get lots of, lots of cancellations in this formula, and you will not see the this infinite number of bosons and fermions, and you will see just one boson, for example, in the denominator. You may have. The measure of how it is, you may have. And so you would think, you may think that, that uh, the, uh, this theory, its DPS sector is described, it can be described by a single by a form of, by ordering a form of your theory in two dimensions with a finite number of fields. Um, but in fact, it's not true. Because if you take the full defined partition function, you will get an infinite number of fields. And it's, this number is so infinite that you actually you should better be thinking in terms of the high dimensional theory. However, it should be a high dimensional theory, ideally, in which only holomorphic fields propagate. So you, you should be. Uh, in good. So the, the pre kaiser article which I talked about is of course a possible realization, but this realization is redundant. We have lots of conservation between possible determinants. So it should be a better description 
where you get rid of all the uh, uh, you know, quartets of, of, uh, of the main supersymmetry, uh, which, will, uh, which will reproduce this partition function, at least in, the, in this job. So this is one indication for, for the need of uh, <coughs> one indication. For the need of high dimensional homomorphic theory. The, uh, you know, the Lorentz symmetry is uh, broken, it's a special, the, the space time here has, has a somewhat special uh, geometry. So, this theory may not be, in fact, it may not, it may not be very symmetric. And so, we know some examples of theories which are non dependent and uh, ugly, nevertheless, are useful, something like the various types of theory, which means the six dimensions of homomorphic transcendence. Uh, but it's not going to be a piece of theory to be studied in this context. Nikita, in this description you throw A away completely, yeah? So, uh, so this was a model example where uh, you had uh, a one theory, and the one theory the behavior dependence is uh, almost true. It's actually there. You can use uh, it mm -hmm. If you are really that, there is a factor is taking the A square into the and somehow it's getting normalized with all these pre factors which is. So, of course, uh, if uh, you study multiple grains, right here, it's not trivial in the past. So, this is, uh, this is what I'm going to talk about uh, the theories which have on trivial independence, and that will give another hint for the need for need of such theories. Also, when you look at it in a theory, well, in six dimensions, so here you actually have like an infinite lane with a lot of colors that are moves, which should be the all colors. Right. Right. All, all the time, all the colors. Yes. But the point is that, so, so you can reproduce this ratio of theta functions by taking the, uh, taking into account all colors that are moves of the free tensor multiplet. Yes. Uh, however, as I said, uh, most of these close kind modes uh, cancel out. Right, right. I'm not saying it's an intention description. Just so, so, the, so I'm, I'm saying that it would be better to have a minimal description where you keep only those modes which are truly needed. And so that's, so this, this, this tells me what, what modes are truly needed. And uh, well, when I look at this, I see that I, I, I still need uh, an infinite number of bosons, as many bosons as there are homomorphic functions on C2. So mm -hmm. the bosons. The chiral bosons live on the torus elliptic curve, but they enumerate by like, homomorphic functions on, on C2, this are four. So the total number of fields which I have is like the space of homomorphic functions in three quarters dimensions. Mm -hmm. Roughly speaking, uh, the reason why you need an extra that well that it's better to describe in more than two dimensions is because to keep track of all this uh, all these all these colors are time more essentially yeah. I want to add like twisted masses for these things and then these are well, the you I don't know if you can make the twist masses independent of different modes. You see here it was still a special arrangement. Uh, right. uh, but basically yes. So it's a need to take into account all of that. But also to make an amount of dependent, you should to make them dependent on one or R Right. Well R means uh, uh, the R dependence is hidden in the in this uh, Q Q M dependence. So it's, I mean, it's not, a real, it's not the physical R, which is actually, uh, I mean, the actual size of the torus uh, doesn't matter here. And, uh, because it's, it's, a, it's a few exact information. As it should be, because in the holomorphic theory, the holomorphic theory should only care about the complex structure, because it shouldn't care about the... Yeah, the sense of is a little... Well, it's, it's yeah, but, but still, we know that uh, we still have those kinds of slides, and uh, uh, because the functions on the space can be numerated, for example, by looking at the way they transform under an action of a symmetry towards the towards the star, 
So this, this is what doesn't work. As many functions as, uh, as C2. Okay, so then. So you started from uh, the non commutative you want here, right? You started from the non commutative yeah, this, this, this is the response to the non you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how can you, uh, can you generalize this uh, to all uh, other abelian theories? Yeah, how much? Yeah, of course, so there is, a, there, is a, there is a partition function with the left hand side. So I'd like to give one case which has two response to three fields. If I start talking about non abelian case, the left hand side I can write for you. But it will not have this statistic form anymore. It, it will correspond to interaction fields. Yeah. So uh, let's say non abelian statistic uh, where. Uh, so it will be some kind of non abelian terms of balance. Yeah. Yeah. So it should, I mean, it should correspond to non abelian terms of balance. Yeah, yeah. indeed. But uh, that theory is, uh, I don't know what it is, I don't know what non abelian terms of balance studies, but here the hope is that if you have an intelligent guess, the holomorphic version of it, maybe the holomorphic version is easy. So why did you say that the holomorphic chain sums will not be do not do the job? Uh, I'm not sure. There's a holomorphic chain sums, uh, well it may be, I don't know. It's a uh, holomorphic chains probably maybe holomorphic chain sums probably understood. It's uh, like uh, in this uh, Donald Thomas theory, which is sad sometimes that it's a uh, holomorphic chain sums theory. It is not exactly a homophage sandwich theory because uh, so the Donaldson and Thomas in the rank one case, which is which should correspond to the one theory, they already have instant dots, which I could have mentioned four objects, which the ordinary theory doesn't have, so it has to be either a non commutative version of that or it's some super version where it's a chain sandwich for super. It may be a homophage sandwich, it's not completely rolled out. There are some good features. Okay, so now I want to, 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 to give some uh, additional hints that this theory has to exist. Or maybe not in three dimensions, but in two dimensions. Yeah. 
for collection of uh, Hamiltonians, which possible commute and form a maximum family of such Hamiltonians. So you have a map from this uh, phase space P to a base, which is an actual domain in some uh, vector space, so P of energy 2 n such that the fibers of this map, projection of this map H, are uh, Lagrangian. The restriction and So the A sub B is the range point. And the uh,
that is one zero for on the local define. Define locally because the choice of the cycle is, uh, is a local choice. And the same thing. And uh, this ambiguity, the symplectic ambiguity which I talked about is that this choice of the places of cycles is not global. You can do it at some point and then you can transport it uh, around using uh, Gauss uh, mining connection. But then uh, as you come back after having you travel around some singular similarities of this vibration, this place of cycles can, can, can change. But it will change in a way which is consistent with this intersection form, and this is why it is symplectic. Okay. So for the uh, let me give you an answer for the type two theories because that's the uh, simplest uh, for later the simplest way. So it turns out that P <coughs> Okay, first of all, I have to remind you what are the choices for the type 2 theory. So we have gamma, which is in a fine Wittgen diagram. We have to specify what are the uh, dimensions of the gauge group factors. And it turns out that so the, the condition of asymptotic freedom, asymptotic conformality effect, this is this uh, ranks of gauge groups to be all proportional to the uh, thinking labels so this is uh, <coughs> so for the A type reverse All the are equal to one. For the D type, we have four ones, and in the middle we have twos. So this is for the D type. For the E type. Uh, This is uh, E6 hat. <coughs> so we get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1. Two, one. Uh, for the, oh, two more. So, the, so basically, uh, the gauge groups which you have here are products. So, it's for the eight type, type cases, just products of two hands for the same hand, and for the others, you have uh, different arrangements. So, this part would be the standard model. So, you have so basically the theory specified by this number n, the type of the river, AD, number n. And then whatever data I told you about the uh, like cool branches and the like, gauge couplings and so on and so forth. Uh, now there is one important so we have gauge couplings, we can find some gauge couplings which are this form. And out of these couplings we can form a, a specific combination how we choose the sum of the pi. And that's this combination plays a special plays an important role. <coughs> it turns out that this phase space, with back to theories, 
it's actually the modular space of of the ADE ADE instantons of charge n in the geometry of the form of the product R2 cross T2 and this T2 here has a, so it has a double structure which is determined by the parameter tau. And the rest of the data, so this is a non compact space, so one, uh, we should specify precisely the boundary conditions. And the boundary conditions are such that uh, as you go towards infinity on R2 space, So this is the whole that as R goes to infinity, so R so A approaches a flat connection on T2, flat AD connection. So this is not 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 anything new. When we start instantons on R4, you we'll also approach a flat connection with infinity. But on R4, with infinity, you have a three dimensional sphere, and there's only one flat connection. But here, at infinity, you have uh, T2, with that T2 plus this one, and uh, it's, not, it's not simply connected. And so you, you can have a non trivial flat connection, and so the non trivial uh, condition is that this flat connection on T2 corresponds to the rest of the H couplings. You see, uh, well, let's, 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 let's take an example. If, uh, so this graph which I have drawn corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is, this is uh, the A5 had a quiver. We have six gauge couples in the group, because there are six vertices here. One of this couple, one of the combination of, so the sum of these complexified couples by this formula will determine the shape of the torus on which my instantons will live. So I'm left with five parameters. And these five parameters determine for me the flat S, uh, flat SU6. So flat SU6. Connection on T2. So, what is an associated connection? It's a, uh, so, it has two holonomies around A cycle and B cycle, which commute. You can simultaneously diagonalize them. They will have some eigenvalues. You have uh, six eigenvalues, but the product is equal to one. So, you have five parameters to parameterize eigenvalues, five parameters for the A cycle, five parameters for the B cycle, which together give you five complex parameters, which are more precisely five points on the on the torus. And these are these uh, tau r parameters whose sum is fixed. So that's, that's the way to get those. Uh, actually, more precisely, we have to specify not only the actual value of the asymptotic connection, but also its first, uh, the, the way the case. And that uh, decaying parameters go into the uh, values of the U1 parts of the pool parameters. Now, uh, with all these boundary conditions specified, you can actually define a homomorphic symplectic from the space of the H fields by computing the integral of the R2 plus T2 of the form dz dx, which is where so I, I want to identify so if I use a complex structure my T2 becomes an elliptic curve with tau and R2 becomes uh, line C1 with the coordinates x and coordinate z. And so this is the uh, homomorphic symplectic form 
on the model of process instant noise. So my instant noise is on the equation plus the zero. And here you see only the zero one part of the gauge field, which is the homomorphic actually on the complex structure. So it's a homomorphic coordinates on the on the model of instant noise use complex manifold. So this is a total space, so this is point P. And M here is actually something like N times A i, which is also N times the dual constant, well, just the constant number, corresponding to the Okay, so I give you the phase space, I give you subjective form. Uh, what I should also give you are the Newtonians. So what, what is the structure of the multiple system here? And um, this is defined as follows. So imagine that uh, I have my instant on, now uh, k cross to 2. And now at each point x on the base, I have an elliptic curve. It's the same torus. The same, the same elliptic curve which I have to fit Now I have a four-dimensional gauge field, but I can restrict this gauge field on the fiber, on the particular on the fiber of the point x. In fact, I will almost did the zero one component. So then, well, what do I have? I have a, a zero one gauge field on the elliptic curve. I can find gauge <coughs> uh, when it is a given by a diagonal, constant diagonal matrix. With some eigenvalues. I mean, eigenvalues in general in, uh, for the uh, for the AD type. Gauge fields means that you can, by, by gauge summation, you can make this gauge field to sit in the Cartan sub algebra. So you can expand in, uh, <coughs> in, uh, in the Cartan generators. So these are the generators of Cartan sub algebra. The algebra of the corresponding AT group. So you have this bunch of bunch of coefficients, these generalized eigenvalues, which are some functions on the base. So they are constant along the fiber because that's that's what uh, the complexified gauge solutions allow you to do. So this is by the complexified gauge solutions. Uh, so so they may depend on x. <coughs> in fact, the self-duality and self-duality equation tell you that the locally they, they depend on x homomorphically. Sorry, but how do you keep track of the holonomies on the two tor the torus? So this is so the so the holonomies will be determined by the exponentials of this teeth. Actually, I should tell you something. See, uh, I'm only looking here at the zero one component of the gauge field. The one zero component of the gauge field is complicated. So, in fact, so the, gauge, the restriction of the gauge field of the full gauge field on the torus is not flat. So the f one one part on two two is not zero. So uh, the holonomies will not the holonomies will depend on which cycle, not only which cycle, but which representative of the cycle of the motor. But holomorphically, you can still do this. You can, you can gauge the zero one part of the gauge field to make a constant and uh, Cartan value. And if you allow to, if you allow to modify the one zero component of the gauge field, then you can actually make it a unitary gauge field which will be flat. And then, then the holonomies of the flat gauge field will be precisely the Exponential real part of T and exponential the imaginary part of T. 
but that means we flat H2 will not be the original H2 which we wrote from the formula. Anyway, uh, now these TIs are, are defined up to an action of the value group, so you can graph it per but also the lattice of weights and the lattice of weights multiplied by graph. So this guy group is forms what's called a fine line group. And this is uh, sometimes called double uh, or elliptic product group or Bernstein uh, Schwarzman group. Uh, I mean, you can simplify life by looking at exponential quantities. <coughs> so by taking exponential, we will get rid of this double one, and we still, can, we still have this tau. So this is defined up to W defined. So if you want to really, if you really want to find uh, some gauge invariant observables, which you uniquely associate to A, you would have to take some theta functions out of these uh, explanations of T's, and then uh, some ratios of theta functions. And there is an old uh, theory of uh, Lyanka, which says that so these ratios Theta functions, so the invariance they actually uh, defined to a point in the weight projective space with the weights a zero, a one, a r. So in uh, uh, for the a type rivers for the A type group for the SU for the uh, SUN for the SU let's say K gauge theory you literally have uh, K plus one eigenvalue which would be uh, which will sum to zero so then when you pass to this initial point is and take into account the action of the remaining gauge solutions what you will get you will get K plus one point of elliptic curve which sum up to zero up to permutations. And um, so the quotient in the A case, you get the elliptic curve to the power of the A case. Um, A minus 1 divided by the action of the symmetric group, which produces K, K objects. And this is the ordinary projective space of the nationality k minus one. Because this, so this exponential space just parameterizes theta functions on the single elliptic curve, which have precisely k zeros, which is not zero. And for other groups, you'll get not the ordinary projective space, but the weighted projective space. So the upshot is that by looking at the way the invariance depend on x.
And by looking at the system of uh, fiber voice, so the on each fiber, you, have a, you can define a, a flat connection on T2, which is a point in the spray projected space. And so by forgetting everything else, but this restriction and the way it depends on X, you will get the map of the modular space of four dimensions in dots to the space of maps uh, of degree n of C1 to, uh, to the square projective space. And this is actually a very simple object. It's, this is so the map from CP1 to, to, to here is just a collection of polynomials in one variable <coughs> such that the degree, the degree of the polynomial PR is equal to n times PR with some conditions. So we, we have a map of CP1 where the infinity has to go to a particular point determined by, by tau's. And also the first derivative uh, is like the same So there are some restrictions, plus restrictions on the two highest coefficients. And so this space is just parameterized by the coefficients of this polynomial. So this is just a vector space. And in fact, it's the vector space of the uh, precise half dimension. So Nikita, sorry, but these are maps with some specified uh, condition. You say that uh, so the degree of the map is specified, the infinity no. is mapped to a particular point mm -hmm. on this way projected space. And also the first derivative of infinity is also specified. So if you imagine, so if you just draw the image of this map in this way projective space, it's a curve of some degree, and it has to pass, so the infinity on, on the curve has to pass to a particular point here, and the tangent vector is also fixed. But don't you have a modular space of maps that satisfy these conditions? Yes, it's, ah. it's a whole modular space. Ah, okay. And it's modular space that is a vector space of dimensionality m. So what I'm saying is that I have a map from the modular space of instant dots <coughs> to this modular space of maps. Okay. And the modular space of maps is half dimensional, <coughs> and the fibers are dimensional. And, and what are the fibers? So, okay, what are the fibers? The fibers are they're kind of difficult to describe, so yeah. But uh, of course, so they are, these are the abelian varieties which you construct uh, in a couple of different ways. So, so first of all, we have a curve, which is the so for each point on the base, we have a rational curve, just a copy of C1 sitting inside this complicated projective space. Which was, uh, in my view, it was the quotient of the elliptic of curve to the power r by the action of the environment, essentially. You know, better, there's a better description, but basically that's what it is. So each point on the curve actually corresponds to a W orbit, W is by the So you can now, so there is a cover, there is a double cover of this rational curve. So one can define curve C is the double cover of the of C1. Which is just a lift of this curve to, to the uh, which sits inside the the corner of the elliptic curve. So that curve uh, you can call it a uh, camera curve because it parameterizes the inside parameterized cameras in the space for the light view that. And uh, <coughs> the first guess would be to take 
get the uh, the Jacobian of this curve because that will give you the variety. But that's wrong. That's, that's too large. It has uh, the dimension of that is, is uh, too large. Remember that this is a wide group. So, for example, already for the AP case, but it's really like a chaos one factorial gamma. Not so. But this curve is actually the wild group. And so there is some there is a sub variety actually inside the Jacobian of C. There is a sub variety which consists of W group with the variant line bundles. This is also not exactly correct, but it's not the final. Roughly speaking. You keep you, you keep track of w of the way the value acts, and so then you can find inside this Jacobian which is huge, a smaller smaller uh, sub variety, which is like a generalization of print variety. And that's the final. Yes. Uh, no, I just wanted to understand. This is a cover, but when you say uh, w is the order of the right group. The, well, W is a value group, yeah, I mean, okay, so the cover is actually the order of the value group to one. And it's, it's an abuse of notation, because W acts actually on C, so the, the whole orbit of W is a fiber of the And the base B uh, typically uh, could be also an orbital space, because uh, when you choose the, uh, or you choose the weights in the projected space such that that's well, these weights are chosen for us. These are the weight. weights. So we are not, uh, not free to change them. And so it always gives a, a smooth space or uh, can give also... Well, actually, seriously, this space is not smooth in general. Ah, it's only yeah. false regularities. Ah. But the space of, uh, of these maps, is actually positive maps, uh, is smooth. It's, it's just a rational space. It's like here. It's, uh, you know, sometimes it's more dimension, lower dimension. Uh, things which look like more before the so it's not Okay. Uh, basically this fiber anyway, so this is the structure of the integral system. It's uh, described in this language, maybe not very convenient for applications, but sometimes it is a good description. So this projection H, uh, you could write it if you like, if you want to kind of explicit formula. So this H assigns to an instant on the four dimensions the coefficients of expansion of the theta function composed of the, uh, when you substitute the gauge field, the, uh, uh, the torus component of the gauge field. As a function of it would be essentially a polynomial bunch of polynomials, so the coefficients of these polynomials are the components of this H. What I want to stress here is that uh, the space space universally is defined in terms of the four-dimensional H fields. These are not, by the way, this is not four dimensions by the original H theory, because that theory is in R4. Not only to this is a different geometry which emerged out of the So this is a classical geometry, but it, it emerged out of the geometry part integral the whole fluctuations can move the cup. And also notice that the uh, four-dimensional gauge theory. Gauge group, which was the product of multiple groups, and on this whole side, and on the dual side, we have the AD group, the instant of charge is equal to N, so this N, and the geometry of which the that you leave since I'm too close to you. Now, something happens, something special happens for the A type theories. Of A 
it and fields. Um, in this case, there is no transform. So you start with so A type means that here the G A D would be S U uh, K. And so you study the charge and this becomes about two cross two. So there is equivalence as a morphism of moduli spaces of uh, U N solutions of so these are distant ones. And here you look at the solutions of Hitchens equations. Mm -hmm. For the D, 
start the similar transform. It's almost possible, but it's already ugly. For the E-type, it uh, almost certainly does not exist. And so the language which uh, we should be trying to generalize is we use here the four dimensions, and therefore I think that uh, instead of the two-dimensional conformal field theory, leaving on the torus and then maybe on some hydrogen supersurfaces, one should try to generalize the uh, two-dimensional CT to a uh, two-complex dimensional um, complex homomorphic. What is this theory? I don't really know. So it uh, could be a WZW4 theory. Could be something else. So, uh, how much time do we have? Um, 20 minutes. How much? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. Okay, so uh, in the remaining time, uh, let me say something about the better states.
But the most basic is that there is a, the fact that this geometry moves in two dimensions is not infinitely related to the fact that the CFT moves in two dimensions. It's the same in this, this space time from, the, from these equations and the space time of CFT is the same space time. Yeah, but CFT is more general. What I'm doing today, I'm exploring various sorts of so this is the PSCFT, which is uh, it exists for both for all epsilons, epsilon one, epsilon two, epsilon two, epsilon three, and so on. So that kind of information. It's a sort of on the on the modular space of all parameters. You can take various limits where you can see you can nice some something. And GT is an example of when you have a particular gauge to the left hand side, particular performance to the right hand side. Uh, Alright, now, uh, the kind of slight implication uh, comes from the fact that if you start with four dimensional gauge to Then the uh, and if you with one one percent information, you want to look at it as a uh, at the, as a uh, two dimensional uh, gauge theory. It is not very really well defined. You have to you need to specify more precisely uh, boundary conditions for the four dimensional fields uh, in the directions where which do not belong to the two dimensional space time of the theory. And so. Essentially, what it means is that you can get different two dimensional n equals two supersymmetric gauge theories out of a single four dimensional theory. So, it corresponds to many two dimensional supersymmetric gauge theories. Different boundary conditions. So, uh, and therefore, in, in, uh, in the given four dimensional specification theory, there are many quantum integral systems which are contained. So, uh, today I want to just simplify my life and talk about the particular two dimensional theory we deal with to illustrate some feature, and then it will be clear maybe about how this. Is it that there are many different quantizations or there are different more severe signs? There are different representations of the different of the single locomotive function. So there are different quantizations and this name has many levels. So here, even if we agree on what kind of quantizative algebra we should have, it can still be represented in all different spaces and these are not going to ignore the presentations. That's a very good Excuse me. Have yes. you had um, like one or two examples of these different boundary conditions as you recall? Uh, like you can get this so you can get that potential. Yeah, well. This is a safer sound of way. To tell you the truth, I don't actually remember exactly what we do. So, Something like like the following. You you uh, so for okay, so the geometry which you work with is convenient to, to work on a product of a cigar. Okay. So it's a it's a geometry which has asymptotes. I suppose it looks like R1 plus this one. And this is cross cross two-dimensional Kaspar space. And so on this space, we so the boundary conditions which I'm talking about are the conditions near infinity of this R1. And so one choice would be to uh, let's say fix the to fix fix the real part of the uh, scale of five plus the i times the uh, 
let's say, y is a coordinate on, on the circle, the fixed take a part of the gauge field, where you have fixed uh, dimension, part of phi plus uh, normal components so with this phi. So, that kind of choice. And in the integral system, what will that correspond to? Okay, well, uh, Let's take the simplest, the simplest example of your n equals 2, let's say, s uh, one even s2, like h theory. So, the integral system which you will get from one normalization is just a, uh, so it's a total system. So this is the Hamiltonian, and so one way to represent this is to say that uh, uh, so P is so let's say epsilon d by dx, minus p i, I'm sure, and one representation x would be for the circle. That's one choice. So this, so then the, the, the stationary states will be solutions to the material equation, and uh, it's uh, maybe with some uh, log parameter. And another representation, i x will be from the real line, so it would actually probably be cost potential. So you look at the L2 functions on the real line. Uh, it's a different spectral problem with a different, different spectrum. Just to make sure, the asymptotic radius of that cigar is one of x. In some picture, yes. Okay. So, uh, uh, so now I want to I just I want to get rid of, of these ambiguities. I want to discuss the pure uh, pure two-dimensional theory, which is in fact uh, do I have gauge theory with L fundamental. At the most, that's, this is a theory actually which starts as n equals to 4, and then we add the piece of mass to break it down to n equals to 4. So we have, uh, it's a quiver theory with, one, with global symmetry in L. And there is a V1 symmetry under which the, um, the fundamental type of multiplets have the charge um, minus 1 and the scalar of the vector multiplet has the charge plus 1. This is the vector multiplet. So this is a familiar, familiar problem. And, uh, it is well known that the vacua of this, uh, of this theory corresponds to the uh, stationary states of the spin chain. These are not just the beta states of the spin chain. Say again? These are not just the big states, the big Which are just the big states, yes. So the vacuum uh, is one to the states of, uh, of the XSX in one half in homogeneous 
based on the vacuum state. On the but in this <coughs> correspondence for gauge theory, this, this formula is not good because uh, the gauge theory with the fixed gauge group lives in the sector where the number of spins pointing up is always equal to n. So this vacuum where all spins point down is not in the space of states of that period. So this formula doesn't make sense in, in particular gauge theory. It's an interesting uh, whole line of thought in which type of, in what type of gauge theory this formula would make sense, but there will not so let me just uh, speed up a little bit. So my claim is that psi lambda of x is actually an operator. It's an operator in the H theory. In fact, we should think of this so it's, not, it's an operator O, which depends on x. So for different x, we have different operators. And this dependence of lambda is just the way you express it through the scalar sigma and that So it's a function and complicated. It has complicated representative. In terms of, of sigma, sigma field, which is the field used in describing the effects of but the beauty of the better state is that this operator has a relatively simple interpretation in terms of the original fundamental elementary fields of the gauge linear signal. And this is what I want to, to finish with. So, uh, <coughs> can I have five more minutes? So, uh, uh, I want to do you know, one more motivation. So some of you were not here, but uh, were not born, but uh, some of us studied the two dimensional dynamics. And uh, in 1992, we did suggest to look at the. So, so this theory can be written as in, in annotations, which are close to what I do now, in terms of the field sigma, the H field A, and some fermions. The Lagrangian was trace uh, sigma f plus uh, some parameter times trace sigma squared. So that's, the, that's one possible way of thinking about this in uh, this theory. But we can suggest that we look at it as a subsector in uh, n equals 2. So this belongs to n equals 2. two. Superannuals theory where additional fields like sigma bar, uh, additional fermions, and what also some auxiliary fields. Notice that in addition we have two bosons into fermions, and with respect to some supersymmetry, some supercharge of the two superannuals, they form a part. So if you are uh, if you massage it properly, you can get rid of that by a part of the And so, what these guys are, so this term actually corresponds to a twisted superpotential. which is trace of C squared. If I put the coefficient T0 as a C T2, this superpotential would be a uh, trace C squared. So it's not just, it's not the n plus 2 super mills per se, but it's the n super mills where you turn on the plus 2 super potential to a single square. And after you turn on this information, and also add the, the zero observable, so just this is not a super interaction, which breaks the symmetry down to one supercharge, you can get rid of all other fields, and this is what you do. So, in particular, if you neglect T2, so then sigma acts as an Lagrange multiplier. For the equations f equals to zero. And so as we know, this theory computes essentially the volume of homogeneous supply connections in the surface. 
Now suppose, in addition to what I've done here, let me still do that. Okay, single squared. I would insert the observable at some point on the wall chain, which is uh, which is an integral of the uh, quadrant orbit g mod t of, of the group g by the h group exponential of sigma evaluated at point p, so this would be observable uh, at the point p and will also depend on some additional data, which is uh, the type of the orbit lambda, the type of this orbit, uh, the value of the moment map, so the moment map <coughs> embeds the orbit into <coughs> dual the algebra. So sigma is the field, uh, so trace, I don't use trace, it's just a trace. trace so sigma is the same scalar, I evaluate it at point P, but then I multiply by the moment map for the, for the particular orbit, and then I integrate over the orbit with the synthetic form. This is Kirill's form. In fact, lambda entered the definition of this Kirill's form. So, this, so uh, this is called the covariant volume. And this is also known as the Isaacson square integral for the integral. Uh, but uh, after the task has settled, after I've done my orbit integration, what I've got is just some symmetric function, it's just some gauge invariant function of sigma. So it's some complicated function of sigma. The advantage of using this observable, as opposed to the observables like trace sigma square and sigma cube and so on, is that now it has a very clean geometric meaning. Namely, an insertion of such observable means that my equation f equals to zero now is replaced by an equation that f is equal to the delta function at the point p with a coefficient mu. Okay, so what is mu equal to exactly? We don't know because we integrate over all possible mu's in the given conjugacy class. But what it does tell me is that now my gauge field is not flat, but at least it, it has a defect at the point P, such that the homogeny of my gauge field around this defect has a conjugacy class which is determined by lambda, by the type of the orbit. So these observables were called by Blau and Thompson and called Wilson points. If you think about this theory as being the reduction of three dimensional chair science theory, then this observable is it's a Essentially, the dimensional reduction of the of Polykov's loop, the Bull's loop in the, in the third direction. So, inserting this observable is the same as just considering a I mean, flat connection with prescribed. <coughs> yeah, so it's, you allow a particular similarity, you insist on a particular similarity of each field, and you fix conscious customer. It's a kind of okay. uh, Now, <coughs> If you increase supersymmetry, so 2 the other music is to n equals 2 theory, if you increase supersymmetry to n equals to 4, for example, the natural observable will become the integral not over the, uh, the orbit, the compact quadrant orbit, but over the uh, its cotangent bundle, which is a which is exactly which is a complex quadrant. And then uh, the question is what do you integrate? So you can try to, to write the similar expression, but then the integral will diverge because it's a non compact space. So it's, 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 it's a hypercular. It's a hypercular. Yeah, it's a, it's a hypercular. You can view it as a, it's a quotient of the complexified root by the complexified space. But it's not compact. So, as it is, the integral will not, have, will not converge. But what the theory is deformed uh, by giving a twisted mass to the natural scalar and other fields, it actually becomes a regular. It is a regular. Thank you.
one. The sort of observable you can use actually, for example, in the Kabi Keller version of the two dimensional distance theory. And uh, in that theory, you already see some intersimulation of quantum integrable systems, uh, which gives you the uh, a system of, of particles with delta, delta, delta function potential. And actually, this, this integral reproduces the beta, uh, the beta wave function for, for that model. So now I want to now tell you this preparation, I want to tell you the real things of the beta wave function for the speed chain in terms of, uh, of this data. So now we have learned one thing, namely that uh, it is interesting to use the observables which insist on having a different gauge field where you fix the Cauchy basic class of the monotony around the point. And in particular, the gauge group at the point in some sense reduces from group G to the, to the maximum torus. And the observable is just it's the way to average integrate of all possible embeddings of the maximum torus in the group, or in this complexified form. So uh, the observable which I want to introduce for this fundamental theory, for the theory with fundamentals and adjoints, is the form. So it will be the integral again of uh, the classified orbit. And now I want to take the delta function. Uh, On the, on the bosonic fields, and there are also conditions on the corresponding fermionic fields. 
So uh, these are some representatives, if you like, of differential forms on uh, on the potential bundle of the Brasmanian. And uh, in the effective theory, where you int integrated this field Q out, you will replace these delta functions by, by the uh, cohomologically equivalent expressions, which will involve only the field sigma. And then,
And that each delta function, like this one, will be replaced by a factor. So for example, the delta function of Q <coughs> becomes essentially a let's see, a lambda i minus mu y minus uh, u over 2. So u is the twisted mass. This is the common twisted mass for the mu uh, of the phi. And mu uh, so mu a are the twisted masses for the L symmetry. This is for the one symmetry. Okay, so this is the contribution of the delta function of Q. The contribution of the delta function of Q is uh, uh, well, we should change the signs uh, here, u y minus lambda r. But we we'll keep the same sign for the twist mass. Uh, the same. In charge, and then uh, depends on how. So you uh, then there is a part of which comes from integrating out the g mod t space. So there is this integration of tangent space at fixed point, and that's uh, the product over uh, i less than j, lambda i minus lambda j, lambda i minus lambda j plus u. Then you uh, average with respect to the action of the uh, symmetric group where so W lambda i is lambda i. And this is actually after some uh, prefactor which is not interesting. It's precisely the coordinate form of the, of the uh, wave function for the expansion. If you take a limit when L goes to infinity, uh, some twisted masses are sent to infinity so that you get the uh, main particle system out of the spin chain to get the form of the better wave function of the uh, Young system. And uh, here, if you send mu to zero, you will get precisely the better wave function of beta. Thank you.
So is there an interpretation of these observables in the uh, infrared nonlinear sigma model, the maps to the cotangent to the Grassmannian? Well, the, so the maps of the Grassmannian is an unknown <coughs> description. In yeah? infrared, you see only a massive theory of this uh, field sigma. Mm -hmm. And so this is the infrared description. Ah, so this is the, uh, the other this phase. Is the this is the other part. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a, a direct link with the... With the so this is, a, this is an enumerative absorber. Because when you sort this absorber, you instruct your... So in, the, in ultraviolet, your model, essentially the A model, on, you can make... I'm sorry, yeah. So if you really concentrate on this particular Q, in the ultraviolet, you're dealing with the A model on the contention to the just one. Mm -hmm. Equivalent A model. Yes. So these are usually enumerative observables. You say that you want the uh, map to pass to the locus where you know, your planes are in such and such position yeah. with respect to the With some fixed degree? The degree of the map is irrelevant here, it's for any degree. So, ah, it's this is a local observable, it doesn't know about the degree of the map. This is a local observable. The degree is counted by thinking. The degree of the map will be counted on the counted on by the uh, by the Kähler module. Yes. The Kähler module enter in the effect of the vacuum, equations for vacuum and for the quantum multiplication. But they don't enter explicitly in the formula for the wave function. Mm. Oh, I have forgot to say. Uh, so the way both equations are derived in the coordinate space time is, is by some imposes some sort of periodicity. So the periodicity now in this x space sense. And that involves the Kähler module section. So this, this operators are bring the twisted periodicity conditions. And then, uh, if you shift x by 1, and put some like x2, x3, xl, and then put say, xm, and then put here xm, x1 plus l, and it's the same thing as the original side. But with the factor. Mm -hmm. So this is this, and this instant, contains the instant of charge. Uh -huh. This instant of factor. Mm -hmm. That involves the main mm -hmm. And from this equation you get you get the consistency conditions, which are the equations for the vacuum. I see. So the current ring of the type A model is described in the vacuum. Yeah. And the quantum multiplication? Well, it's uh, just the multiplication of, of in the community algebra functions of the space platform. Uh, ah, so, so it's it's the, the, you have the, the exact counterpart. Is the quantization of the model? Or the, it's, 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 what is the counterpart in the integrable model? Uh, uh, well, no, it just, it's, it's, I think it's just a product of commutators. Uh, that uh, if you commute the the product is also commuted to commute the And there is something profound in the, which you know on the single model side, namely the, that you have uh, actually, actually you have you get, this model have a way of deforming the stuff. So for each local operator you have a deformation parameter t, mm -hmm. and then there is some integrability in the form yes. of WTV equations, which uh, on this side you don't see except for only for this parameter q, which corresponds to a particular parameter. So it's, uh, it's an interesting open problem to find what are the other, and how did you form the uh, pin chain by turning on all possible marginal, not, they're not marginal, but uh, all, all, all deformations of the signal, which uh, respond to all cohomology classes of the corresponding variety. So, so far, this Q parameter responds to the second cohomology, which is one dimension. Yes, yes. So that's so the small part of the yes. But as we know, there are also higher high order, high order deformations, which, are, which may or may not 